You may have been following one of the controversies around women's sport as you've been watching the Olympic Games. In fact, a movement is gaining pace here in Australia, defending the right of the Norwegian women's handball team to wear bike shorts instead of bikini bottoms. Concerns about the objectification of women in sport was highlighted recently when the team was fined for inappropriate clothing. A petition has been gaining real momentum over the past couple of weeks. Melinda tankard reist leads Collective Shout and is joining us to unpack some of the issues around this controversy. Melinda, welcome along to 2020. Great to be back with you again, Neil. Melinda, the offensive clothing and uh, bike shorts here (laughs) in the mix, give us a little outline of what you've been monitoring along. Yes, it's hard to believe that uh, bike shorts would be deemed inappropriate clothing for the female Norwegian beach handball team to wear, but it certainly uh, was. The fact is that the male players are allowed to wear tank tops and shorts, uh, but the international Handball Federation rules state that women players have to wear bikini bottoms, quote, with a close fit and cut on an upward angle towards the top of the leg. And they are not allowed to be more than 10 centimetres across uh, the width. And so we've been arguing that, uh, you know, female players should be able to wear shorts. They should feel comfortable. Many of the players themselves have said that they become hypervigilant. They can't focus on their performance. Uh, They're worried about unwanted exposure. They're worried about uh, men taking photos of them and sharing those photographs. So we think it's uh, grossly unfair that the standards uh, for the men are very different uh, to the standards for women, and there's no reason for that. Melinda, we're all glued to the Olympic Games right now, looking at our favourite sports, and I'm just thinking swimming, diving, water polo, even on the athletics field, uh, they're into, in some sense, uh, something close to the bikini bottoms. Uh, What are your thoughts for all those sports involved? Look, I think that female players should be able to wear what they are most comfortable in and what will enable them to perform at their peak without being distracted the whole time, worrying about a wardrobe malfunction And that does seem to be the case with the beach volleyball, that it's almost like a built-in wardrobe malfunction. Uh, That seems to be um, the aim, is to to expose the women's bodies. And uh, it's just not fair. It's not uh, equal that women should have to be self-conscious and hyper-vigilant and unable to focus on performance, whereas the men can just get on with the job and uh, we've noticed that the recently the um, German gymnastics team actually decided to wear full length unitards at the Tokyo Olympics and this is the first time uh, that that the team has done this and the fact is that uh, the women came out and said they wanted to be role models for young gymnasts Uh, who often don't feel safe, don't feel comfortable, can feel very exposed. They can feel sexualized in in the sport. And this is a sport, of course, which has been rocked by sexual abuse, uh, primarily by the former Team USA doctor, Larry Nasser, who was sentenced to 175 years in prison for abusing uh, gymnasts. And so we just felt so proud of the German gymnastics team for taking that stand and for being able to perform at their their peak in a bodysuit that they felt most comfortable in. So we're seeing the winds of change and we're hoping that Talitha Stone's petition will help to uh, to drive that, that change further. What about sports administrators in all of this? You can get the impression that given the skimpiness of a woman's mm-hmm. sports outfit, that they'd be concerned about the idea that to promote women's sport, you've got to have a certain sex appeal in there. Is that the same as when we talk about the sexualization of girls and women? Is the word sex appeal actually delivering on what we're talking about with that? Well, the fact is female athletes are objectified because women are objectified. 
it's, it's mostly women who are objectified and most negatively impacted. We know this has become routine. You and I have talked about this before, the hypersexualized representations of women in media advertising and pop culture and how women are defined by their, their physical attractiveness, uh, their sexual attractiveness uh, in a way that is uh, just unfair. And we're seeing it, you know, in, in so many areas because it's just so established and normalized and systemic, which is actually the reason that Collective Shout started, you know, 10 years ago. And this debate we're having around women's sport, you know, needs to be extended to the ways that women are objectified everywhere. Um, but we do welcome this focus because female athletes shouldn't be punished for wearing an outfit which is functional and practical and allows their freedom of movement, you know, about being worried about unintended exposure. And that's why we're promoting this petition that started by Lisa, who's uh, Australian of origin, but living in Norway, and she's a young athlete herself. And uh, as we're speaking, we're approaching 60,000 uh, signatures. We're hoping to get it up to 100,000. And this, uh, this is calling on the International Handball Federation uh, to stop fining players, stop punishing them, and allowing them to wear shorts. Uh, incidentally, the International Handball Federation is comprised, uh, its executive is comprised of 17 men and two women, uh, which <laughs> goes back to your point, you know, who's making these decisions and uh, how they are just not in the best interest of of women, uh, particularly female sportswomen. And they, that's what's behind uh, this this petition. Of course, uh, the International Handball Federation, well, that may not be reflective of Australian values. Uh, any thoughts here on what the attitudes are here in our Australian sport? Because it seems to be uh, that it would be just as rife. Or are there regulations that you're aware of that keep well, women mm. doing the thing that is less modest? Well, actually, we've seen it happen with the uh, with beach volleyball for the women because uh, for, for years and years... Uh, again, there were these very strict requirements on what female beach uh, volleyball players were allowed to wear and, you know, limits on the amount of material that they were allowed to have covering their body in their costumes. And more of those women started to speak out. They talked about uh, how they were worried, you know, during their periods. They were worried about unwanted exposure. They were worried about having photos taken at, at uh, intimate angles and where those photos might end up. And uh, now I believe they have a choice uh, to uh, not have to wear that costume if they don't want to. Uh, that cha They change their policy and so that now women have uniform options. And that's our point. Women should have the choice to wear what they are comfortable in, what enables them to focus on their performance rather than be worried and anxious and, and hypervigilant when, they, when that is just so unnecessary. We... Uh, talk in terms of what's functional, what's practical, what allows freedom of movement. And the fact is that we know that there are declining rates of girls playing sport. And this is one of the reasons they're worried about the focus on their bodies. They're worried that uh, they may not be able to conform to stereotyped ideas about how as young girls they, their bodies should look. They're worried about unwanted attention, which they get enough of in their daily lives already. So they're not comfortable playing in costumes which draw attention uh, to certain uh, body parts and which, again, just make them worried and anxious. And this is a reason that we are seeing tragically declining rates of girls playing sport around the world. That's what the global data shows. At a time when, in a sport, we know how important sport is to girls. Uh, we know that it's good for their mental health, for their, their physical well-being as well, but we need to be encouraging girls to recognise the strengths of their bodies, what their bodies are capable of, what their bodies can achieve in clothing that is functional and practical and enables them to focus on the, on the game um, rather than unwanted exposure. So, uh, you know, we think there is change in, in the air and more women are speaking out about this. And, uh, you know, let's hope we can achieve something. Uh, let's hope this is, is part of this global momentum towards changing the situation so women can enjoy playing sport without being uh, hyper-vigilant uh, about unwanted attention. 
So it's Talitha Stone, and she's got this petition going, and it's on change.org, and there's real momentum coming in behind this. Collective Shout yes. has gotten behind it, and uh, as you say, uh, from uh, just uh, 20,000 or so just a week or two ago, all of a sudden it's pushing 60,000. No doubt you'd like another signature or two on there. Uh, how can people actually get involved in this and put their name to it? Well, the hashtag is Let Them Wear Shorts, and the Change.org petition, the full title is called Drop the Fine and Let Them Wear, wear Shorts. So you can find that at change.org or you can find it at collectiveshout.org or across all of our social media platforms. We're posting on it uh, every day, and every signature counts. You know, don't think that your voice doesn't count. It really does. And we have gone, as you said, from a small number to a, to approaching 60 now as we speak, and we hope to get it up to 100,000. We, we believe that the International Handball Federation is actually having a meeting and that this will be on the agenda in September. All the pressure that we can apply now will help them to decide the right way to allow women to wear shorts uh, when they're playing beach volleyball, not be threatened with fines, not be threatened with disqualification, not be punished, and uh, hopefully this will have a flow-on effect uh, to all women playing sport, uh, whatever their chosen sport is around the world. So, yes, please do add your signature. It will make a difference. Sign the petition and share it with your family and friends, and hopefully we can uh, make it up to 100,000. And as you say, it's not just about elite sports women. It's about every girl, every woman, as she wants mm. to play sports. So change.org and uh, hashtag on social media, let them wear shorts. It's a petition that was started by Talitha Stone. It's got the backing now of Collective Shout. Melinda Tankard-Reist, always good getting your insights. Let me point people to also the Collective Shout website, collectiveshout.org. Melinda, thanks so much for your update today on 2020. It's always a pleasure, Neil. Thanks for your interest.